Welcome to Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS channel partner, we sell and support products from ANSYS Inc. in the Four Corner States and Nevada. In addition, we provide consulting and training in ANSYS tools worldwide. These tools provide simulation capabilities in fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, electromagnetics, as well as systems and multiphysics applications. Hey guys, this is Manoj with PADT. This is part two of our multiphysics simulation with ANSYS Maxwell and ANSYS Mechanical video series. In this video blog, we'll be looking at taking the results of our eddy current analysis that we got in part one, and we'll be using that to determine the thermal and structural effects of those eddy currents. So first of all, we're gonna go ahead and go back into Maxwell to refresh our memory on what we did in part one. So in part one, we calculated the eddy currents of these are three bus bars, and we were able to obtain the J magnitude plot. Now we want to understand what the thermal effects are due to those eddy currents, and then further on, what understand the structural deformations that may occur. So we're going to go ahead and close Maxwell. And now what we want to do is we want to transfer the solution of Maxwell into a thermal analysis. So we're going to right click on solution, go to transfer data to new steady state thermal. And you'll see that Workbench creates a link automatically. So now we're just going to update so that the solution can be transferred. Okay, now that that's done, we'll go and change our material properties. So we're going to go into engineering data and create a new material for copper for our bus bars. So copper, we're going to use the coefficient of thermal expansion, isotropic elasticity for our structural analysis, and then finally thermal conductivity for our thermal analysis. Our coefficient of thermal expansion is 1.77 e to the minus 5 with a reference temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. And then our Young's modulus is 1.2 e to the 10 pascals with a Poisson's ratio of 0.38. And finally, our thermal conductivity is 400 watts per meter C. We can close out of engineering data. And now we want to import in our original model that we imported into Maxwell the first time. So we're going to go ahead and download the busbargeometry.step file. Once that's done, we can go ahead and go into mechanical to do our thermal analysis. So as you can see here, the air is still modeled, in which case we don't need that for this analysis. So we'll go ahead and go into the bounding box and suppress it. And now we're just left with our three bus bars. We want to make sure we remember to change our bus bar material from structural steel to copper. And then finally what we're going to do is we're going to import our load in from Maxwell. So you'll see there's a question mark on here. So we're going to right click and go to insert heat generation. And we're going to choose our three bodies of our bus bars. Click apply. And when you right click on it and say import load, it will import the results from ANSYS Maxwell. And you can see those results right here. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to add a convection item. So we're going to go ahead to steady state thermal, insert convection. We're going to change our selection mode from single select to box select, and we're going to change our selection filter to faces. And when we select this entire area, it'll select all the faces that we need so we can apply a convection item. And our convection term will be 10 watts per meter squared C. We're also going to include radiation. So in the same way, we're going to highlight all of the faces, go to insert radiation, and we're just going to use the default radiation terms here. Now we're going to add a temperature plot for our results, and then we're going to go ahead and hit solve. And now it's going to compute the thermal due to the results that we get from ANSYS Maxwell. So if we look at the temperature, you'll see the temperature distribution along our three bus bars. The other thing you can do is you can grab these convection and radiation terms and drag them over the solution cell to get reaction forces. And so when we evaluate those, we can see that the amount of power that's lost due to each of these conditions. 
So the first one's from convection, second one is from radiation, and we can see that it's pretty significant in respect to each other. So now we want to take this temperature data and we want to compute our structural deformation due to thermal stress. So we're going to go ahead and go back into Workbench, click on our solution, right click, and go to transfer data to new static structural, like we did before. In this case, our engineering data is shared, so we don't have to do anything there. When we go back into ANSYS me Mechanical, we'll see that a new folder has shown up for static structural. And we have a new imported load, which is imported body temperature. So if we go ahead and right click and go to import load, it'll import the temperature results from our steady state thermal analysis into our structural model. So the only other thing that we need is to fix our ends. So we're going to go ahead and insert a fixed support. We're going to do faces, single select, and we're going to select the ends of our bus bars by control clicking. Click apply, and then we can go ahead and insert in a deformation plot. Right click and solve. So, you can see our total deformation scale. This is a result of the temperature load that we get from doing our steady state thermal analysis, which of course is a function of doing the eddy current analysis in ANSYS Maxwell. So you can see it's a three-step approach going from Maxwell to steady state thermal to structural analysis, but at the same time you can see that although it's a very good multi-physics approach, it's pretty easy to do in the workbench environment. We hope this video was useful and please subscribe to PADT as we will be doing more videos on tips and examples in ANSYS. If you have any questions, feel free to call PADT Inc. Otherwise, see you next time.